Welcome to my first ever joint video. With the help of Diara from M3D UK, we're planning to show you a whole year comparison of solar generation between two of the main solutions on the market. Mine using a solar edge inverter and optimizers, and Diara's using N phase micro inverters. Today, we're going to start with a quick overview of our solar installations, and then we'll find out which one was the best after the first six months of this year. Mine is, of course. Yeah, we'll see. Let the battle begin. Let's start with a reminder of my installation. I have 10 390 watt Trina Vertex panels mounted in a mostly south facing direction, slightly southeast. Three of these are on the roof above the garage, so while all of the panels catch the sun early on in the morning, by mid afternoon I'm starting to get shading on the garage. To overcome this, each panel has an optimizer fitted to it uh, to prevent that from affecting the generation of the other unshaded panels. Those panels are all connected to a SolarEdge SE3680H inverter, giving me a maximum solar output of 3.9 kilowatts peak, but limited to 3.68 kilowatts by the inverter. My installation in South Wales tends to generate better in the morning until early afternoon, when the sun starts to move behind the house. But now it's over to Diara in Surrey, who is going to tell you all about his installation. I, on the other hand, have taken a different approach to solving the problem of shading. My roof has four surfaces, each facing a different direction. I have 14 panels in total, three facing southeast, nine facing southwest, and controversially, two facing northwest. Because of this, the amount of sunlight hitting each panel at any given moment will vary significantly. So for me, a string inverter would not be the best solution. Instead, each panel has its own microinverter in my case, an Enphase M250. The microinverter converts individual panels DC electricity directly into AC at the panel level on the roof. This setup enables each panel to operate independently and without it, every panel's output would then drop to that of the panel producing the least. I get a lot of early morning shading to the southeast panels, especially in the winter. The microinverters modulate the shaded panels whilst allowing the rest of the panel array to operate at full capacity unencumbered. In addition, the same applies after midday when, especially during the long sunny days of summer, yes, I know it's the UK and we don't get a lot of those, when the sun is in the west hitting the northwest panels and the east panels are shaded. So my total array size is actually 4.2 kilowatts. However, output is limited as though each panel is capable of generating 300 watts peak, the microinverter's maximum output is 250 watts. So therefore, I have 14 panels, so the total system output is 14 times 250, not 300, given a total peak output of 3.5 kilowatts. This is a similarly sized system to all of us, but with a very different approach to shading and optimization. The question though is which approach is better? Oliver, do you have some results for us? We need graphs, lots of graphs. Things started off very well for me in January. My panels generated almost 118 kilowatt hours compared to Diara's 74 kilowatt hours. I think this is likely due to my slightly better panel positions for capturing the morning sun, and there's no real late afternoon sun either this time of year. Moving to February and Diara is catching me up. To be fair, his values are from a MyEnergy CT clamp, whereas my values are from the inverter itself, so if you take off the inverter's overheads, then there really isn't anything in this at all. I'd say that this friendly, non-competitive comparison is going to be a close call. Totally a competition. Yeah, that's fighting talk. March though, and I surge ahead again with over 400 kilowatt hours to your measly 322 kilowatt hours, and in April, the sun is really starting to shine in South Wales when I generated 505 kilowatt hours and you only managed 422. And I think that's all the comparison we need. We should stop here and declare SolarEdge the winner. No, 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 keep going, keep going. We need a whole six months. <sighs> okay, fine, right. In May, your Enphase system generated 503 kilowatt hours, whereas my SolarEdge system only managed 485 kilowatt hours. 
And for June, again, you beat me fair and square with 562 kilowatt hours to my 555. And I think this really shows that the multi-directional solar array that you've got makes quite a difference to being able to capture energy throughout the whole day. I know that during May and June, there were quite a number of days where it was dull and overcast in the mornings, where my generation would normally be at its peak, and then the sun came out mid-afternoon just as my panels were starting to become shaded. What this says in terms of solar edge versus end phase is that currently there's not a lot in it when it concerns generation performance. Over the last six months, I've generated 2,230 kilowatt hours, whereas Diara has generated 2,051 kilowatt hours. So your decision between these two types of installations, micro inverters or string inverter and optimizers, will come down to your own priorities in terms of cost, impact component failure, or if you have a preference of one company or the other. We're gonna cover these concerns in the next video in a few weeks time, when we'll also give you a progress update on what's most definitely a competition over who can generate the most electricity in this year. Yep, okay, fair point. I'll wrap this video up then. Thanks again to Diara from M3D UK. Please check out his channel where he's documented the whole process of buying a Tesla Model 3. There's some useful advice on there for all EV owners, to be honest, and I'll put a link to that down in the description. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this. Thank you for watching, goodbye.